Good evening. Merry Christmas to you. Glad you're here, uh, ready for a good celebration. Just a couple of announcements. We do offer Holy Communion tonight, and we welcome all who are present to come forward and receive. If you receive communion anywhere, in any church, you're welcome to receive it here. We believe that God is present in the meal as he has promised um, for, for grace and forgiveness in our salvation. Um, at the time of communion, we'll invite you to come forward in two rows up the center aisle. I will place the host in your hand and then ask you to step over to one of the assisting ministers, um, dip your host in the cup and place it in your mouth and return by the side aisle. And I'll remind you of that when we get to it as well. Um, tomorrow we continue the celebration with Christmas Day at 10 o'clock. We'll have a worship service. And then New Year's Day, New Year's Day, the uh, 31st, we will have one service at 10 o'clock, and that's a service of uh, lessons and carols. So we invite you to come back for those things. On the 30th, we're having um, a youth event. Uh, every year on the 30th of December, we cook a meal for the men's shelter, go down and serve it, and when we come back, we spend the night having fun. So. I invite all of our youth from eighth grade and older to uh, come out for that. And a reminder that um, uh, year-end giving, it's important uh, to know that all of your gifts that you want accounted for in 2023 need to be into church um, on the 31st. Uh, or postmarked on the 31st, or electronically on the 31st. If we receive it on the 1st, um, it won't count for this year. And that's just the way it is. It's not our choice. Um, the other thing is, Sunday, January 7th, we're having a meeting to uh, organize ourselves for another year of cooking meals for the men's shelter. Uh, we do uh, about 30 meals a year uh, where teams of people, families, and friends uh, cook and serve meals at the end of each month. And we're always looking for more people who want to get involved. The shelter's down on Brighton Road on the north side, and we can tell you all about it uh, if you're interested in volunteering in that way. It's a great way to serve. I think that's everything I have. Let's um, invite you to stand and face the rear of the church as the cross leads us into worship.
Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is the light no darkness can overcome. We gather to celebrate the great light of our salvation. With a heavenly host, we sing glory to God in the highest heaven. In Christ, God's word is made flesh and lives among us. With the shepherds, we will tell of the wonders we have seen and heard. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite all our young people to come forward at this time. have a few more friends coming that's awesome I think we can make room for everybody huh yeah yeah you can climb up top there okay hi okay all right good job do you want to sit right here Sit down there. Maybe. All right. So, Merry Christmas. Thank you. I'm glad to see you. So, what's Christmas about? Giving. It's about giving. You're right. Excellent. So, at Christmas, we give gifts and love to each other.
because God gave something very special to us, right? What did God give to us? Jesus and love. You're right. Jesus as a sign of love. And what? And people, yes. So, so God gave us this amazing gift of love through Jesus Christ. And so every Christmas we tell the story so that we can remember this special gift that God has given us, right? And we remember the story of how Jesus was born. How many of you know the story of where and how Jesus was born? Yeah? Good job. We got a lot of people. Excellent. So tell me, uh, tell me something you know about when Jesus was born. June, what do you remember about the story? Hmm. Anybody remember where Jesus was born? In a stable, right, in a barn, right? Uh-huh. What else do you remember? He was in a manger. In a manger, that's right. The manger is where you put the food for the animals. So Jesus got to go there. What do you remember? In Bethlehem, excellent. Bethlehem, a little town called Bethlehem, where his ancestors were from. Good, what else? Right, jo Joseph belonged to the house of David. Excellent, yes. That is in a very remote area. It's a very remote area. Very small, out of the way place. Yep, what do you remember? His mom was Mary? Yes, excellent. Jesus lives in hay. And Jesus lives in the hay, yep. Um, he was born in the Roman Empire when Caesar Augustus. It was the time of Caesar Augustus when the Roman Empire was occupying all of Judea. And so they weren't very, the, the Israelites weren't very happy about that, right? So I want, oh, one more thing. Yes, what else do you remember? angels came and told people about the birth of Jesus, right? First, the angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, you're going to have a baby. And then came to Joseph and said, Mary's going to have a baby. And then came to the shepherds and said, Mary had a baby. You should go see it, right? So they told lots of people and shared the good news. All right. So one of the ways that we remember the story is by putting up a manger scene, right? Or a nativity set. How many of you have those at your house? Yeah? So it helps us tell the story because we put Mary there, we put Joseph there, we put shepherds and sheep and the baby Jesus, maybe some other animals. If you turn around, you'll see a really big set and an angel. Yep. So let me ask a question. Do you think there's something missing from up there? What do you think? Jesus. Jesus. Well, we put Jesus up there, right there at the beginning of the service. Hmm? The shepherds. Yeah, we don't have a shepherd, do we? But we have some sheep. Yes. The wise men. The wise men aren't up there yet, are they? Does anybody know where they are? Right, so they're, according to the story, they're still walking or riding camels to get to Jesus, right? Um, for our nativity set, we haven't put them up there yet until um, Epiphany, okay? So I have a game for you to take home that takes us from Christmas to Epiphany, all right? And um, for us, it's, it's 12 days, Christmas to January 6th. 12 days you get to play a game, okay? And I have it for you to take home. And what you're gonna do, it's kind of a, you're in this, in this envelope, there's a picture of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus in the stable. And then there's a picture of the three kings and their camel. And there's a sheet with scratch-offs, one for each day. You scratch off the circle, and it will tell you where to put your wise men as they travel to Jesus through your house. Okay? So who knows where those wise men are going to show up, right? 
but you're gonna move them every single day to a new place until they get all the way to Jesus. Does that sound like fun? All right, so you can take this home, play your game until Epiphany, and I have enough for everybody to get one. Okay, Boop. there you go, there you go. And you can have lots of fun talking about maybe where the wise men traveled and what they saw on the way, okay? Because they had to travel through the mountains, they had to travel through the desert, they had to travel a long ways in order to get to Jesus. Anybody know what they followed? What showed them the way? What do you think? The angels? Not the angels, but something else up in the sky. Oh, what? The star showed them the way, okay? And it was really cool that they made it all the way, okay? Want one for her too? Oh, no one. Share. Okay, there you go. Okay, there you go, buddy. All right, so I hope that you'll play the game every day to help you remember everybody who came to see Jesus. And what does Jesus show us? What's the number one thing Jesus shows us? Love. Excellent. You guys are great. So, Merry Christmas and have fun playing. You can go back. Merry Christmas. Uh, The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all of the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Titus, the second chapter. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, 
and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us so that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night, Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
My friend Holly was excited to get her Christmas gift from her husband early. He wanted to give her a very special Christmas present. He wanted to give her something extra special. So he gave her one dart and a map of the world. And he said, throw it, and wherever it lands, that's where we'll go after Christmas. Pretty special. Well, Holly says, I guess we'll be spending two weeks behind the fridge. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? I kind of doubt that Mary was laughing when Joseph told her they'd be spending an indefinite amount of time in Bethlehem and that it would include giving birth to their first son and they both knew that their son was God's son. So what kind of thing is this? A really significant event for Mary and Joseph and for the world was going to happen in the midst of the smallest, least significant tribe of Israel, in the smallest, least significant, most out-of-the-way part of all of Judea, and then they'd be relegated to a barn. That fridge is looking better all the time, isn't it? But there they were, doing the best they could in impossible circumstances. So I want you to think about a few things. Why do we imagine Mary as meek and mild? And why does Joseph get almost no attention after getting them tucked into the barn? Think about it. Mary, Mary agreed to bear a child out of wedlock in defiance of her culture. And Joseph agreed to stay by her side when he had every right to abandon her and the baby. Mary sang a magnificent song of liberation and freedom for the oppressed and unjustly treated. Like, who's going to listen to her? They made that rough journey to Bethlehem when she was heavily pregnant, and then another journey, escaping certain death, to go to Egypt with a small child in tow. Here's what I think. Mary was a revolutionary, and Joseph was honorable and brave. They are fitting parents for their son who would grow up to be a rebel. God sure knew what he was doing with these two people. But here's the thing about Christmas. The whole story is the story of how God can't be kept out. God is present. God is with us. God shows up not with a pompous parade, but with the whimper of a baby. God shows up not among the powerful elite, but among the least significant, the poor, the marginalized, the lost, the lonely, the lowly. God shows up not demanding, but to the humble and the hopeful. Holiness need not be glorious. Strength need not be powerful. Light need not be piercing. This is what's revolutionary about the story. This baby, who is the very heart of God incarnate in our world, need only be a mirror of human frailty and want. This holy child enters the world like any other ordinary infant, screaming with his first earthly breath. And this is the divine will, that something bigger than our whole world would be placed in a manger, surrounded by animals, shepherds from the field, and angels from heaven. It's so unique, and yet so ordinary. See, that's what God does. God takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. And God takes the extraordinary and makes it ordinary. Like Mary and Joseph, 
like bread and wine at the communion table, like a child born in the night. So I don't know about you, but this has been a tough year. Last December, my family and I made the decision to move my mom into uh, a care facility out of her home. And then in January, I had my second surgery on my neck. And in February, my brother had heart surgery. And then we spent months emptying, uh, cleaning, and fixing my mom's house in order to get it onto the market. In September, my mom died. And it was sooner than we had imagined, but it was quiet and peaceful. And she knew that she was surrounded by our love. With all of that, the church has gone through some extraordinary changes, and war has come again to the Holy Lands with a vengeance. It is so sad to see places destroyed and the homes of millions flattened. It's hard to know the stories of people, real people, who live in both Israel and Palestine, and to wonder how they are, even where they are. I wonder what it would be like for Jesus to be born in our world this night. Would it be different from that long ago time? Reality is that Bethlehem is not a quiet, peaceful fantasy town on Christmas cards. It never was. It's a real place with real people who are hurting now. How do we care for babies born now in non-holy places? If the whole heavenly host showed up tonight singing of peace, it's not because there is already peace. We need peace. We pray for peace. How will the Prince of Peace born this night make the peace we pray for? See, Christmas is, is exactly like this every year for someone. Sad, marked by death, at war with the world or with ourself or with God. How many children run from home this Christmas as a refugee like Jesus? Or as an orphan in Gaza? or a toddler in Ukraine hearing the Christmas story for the first time from a bomb shelter. Jesus, born into this world, a world of oppression and hunger and death, or Jesus born into our world, a world of injustice, hatred, and fear. Christmas is an always story. An every year story, an every day, everywhere story. It's a story of how hope breaks into our world when all hope seems lost. The story of Christ breaking in, into our world, our lives, our homes, our hearts. And hope will win. Something bigger then the whole world has been placed in our hands tonight. Christ our Lord. So let your loving and your giving and your justice and forgiving be a sign to all the living. Christ has come again. Amen.
Living together in one body in Christ, we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God who creates, we give thanks for your word that brings everything into existence. Help us to remember that all we are, all we have, and all we love belongs to you. May we strive to bring your joy to all the world. God, our creator, God who saves us, we thank you and praise you this Christmas that your word has become flesh in Jesus our Lord. Help us to hear and follow Jesus in all that we do, say, and imagine. God our Redeemer, God who sends, we thank you that your word calls us and sends us. Help us to live in the world you created in the name of Jesus the word incarnate by the strength of your word that gives faith. God who makes us holy. God of all, open our ears, our hearts, our minds, and our lives to your holy word. Amen. Amen. God does many things through our offerings. Through the year, your gifts help share the hope of the Messiah. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Receive our offerings and nourish us at your table, that your word may take flesh in our lives. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, 
we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored. By your spirit, bless us and this bread and cup that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. In collective longing for a taste of your kingdom on earth, we join together in echoing the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment. For those who are receiving Holy Communion at home tonight, please take your bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. And now your cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. So I will commune our assisting ministers first, and then we will join you at the bottom of the stairs. Again, I invite you to come forward by the center aisle. You can form two rows. I will place in your hand the host. Take that and move to the assisting minister and dip it in the cup of wine. You may consume it and return by the side aisles. If you put it in your mouth before the wine, don't take it back out. <laughs> I will give you another one, I promise. There's plenty. If you drop it in the wine, don't go fishing. It's okay. I will give you another one. 
Um, if you do not wish to receive or um, have, are young and have not been instructed yet, um, you may come forward for a blessing. Just let me know when you get here. The other thing is we do offer gluten-free host and uh, grape juice for those uh, who need those. Uh, if you need the gluten-free host, let me know. Uh, if you need grape juice instead of wine, the grape juice will be the little cup over by the pulpit, and you can bypass other people and uh, use the grape juice that way. These are God's gifts. Come and receive.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Gracious God, in the incarnation of your Son, you have united earth and heaven. May we who have tasted heavenly things share the gift of your presence with all the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare for the lighting of candles and uh, it getting darker in here so we can sing Silent Night by Candlelight, I would invite you to, first of all, help the people around you, especially the little ones. We don't want anybody getting hurt. And um, one of the best ways to do that is make sure that the only candle you tip is the one that's not lit. So if you're on the end and you have the first light, you're going to hold your candle and then tip into it to light yours and pass it on. So sorry, Anne, could you turn all the lights out, please? <laughs> the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. May the Lord God, who has called you out of darkness to be servants of light, grant you the joy of the angels the eagerness of the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll light the candles and then sing Silent Night.
Glory to God in the highest. Peace to God's people on earth. As heralds of God's peace, go forth in joy to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.